right, here we are with Samantha Riley, who's a little dynamo. She is joining me via Zoom, so we get to see each other and see her beautiful smiling face. And we're going to have a little chat for the One in a Million project. Hi, Sam. Thanks hey, for joining Miriam. Me. Thank you. We had a chat last week when you interviewed me for your podcast. Thank you. Um, and it kind of dawned on us that we've known each other for a while and we've kind of seen each other at different stages of this amazing journey but i've never actually heard the sam riley story so go oh for, go no way okay all right the sam riley story um i've been entrepreneurial for as long as i can remember i used to sell little cakes when i was in like year two at school for money so i've always had that business in me um i didn't finish high school i actually walked out of a class in the middle of year 11 and just went i'm out of here like seriously just packed up my books and walked out of a class halfway through. Um, got married very young. I was only 17 when I got married, had my first child at 17, opened my first business at 19. Um, so have not done anything by the book the whole way through. So the first business we opened um, back then when I was 19 was a dance studio. And within 12 months, we opened up our first retail store selling dancewear. So that was when I was in Adelaide. I owned those with my now ex-husband. And over the years, we did very well. I turned, you know, we turned over our first million when we were in our early 20s. And that was off no actual, I'd never learnt business. So it was just, you know, trial and error, just failing more than winning, but obviously did something, right? And just happily did that for 18 years. And then that everything, you know, you think success is like, you know, you reach a goal and that's the end. And I think that the universe told me that there is, or taught me this, that there is no end. Because when I thought everything was going perfectly, we were making money, like life was grand, got divorced and lost the businesses. That was back in 2010. And it absolutely decimated me financially, um, my self-confidence. You know, I hid away for a couple of years. I couldn't, couldn't even bear to speak to people. Couldn't bear to speak to myself. Um, yeah, then got up, moved to Sydney and started again and now doing what I'm doing now, which is helping business owners to um, really embrace their personal brand and get themselves out into the world. Nothing like a good divorce and total decimation to make you <laughs> realise what you're made of, is there? Uh, that was the very shortened version, you know, like we discussed on your podcast, man. That story could go for hours, but we don't really want to hear it. <laughs> no, and it's not really that healthy to go all the way back there. Suffice to say yeah. that you learn I, I a lot actually, about yourself. Yeah, I think that um, I wouldn't change it for anything. Like, it was tough and it was hard and... I've come out so much stronger, so much happier. You know, it's opened up my life for all these other amazing things to happen. I've learned so much about myself. I believe I'm a much better person through all the, you know, the personal development journey. It is what it is. And um, it's whether we choose to embrace, you know, got moving on and doing something better or whether we choose to, you know, sit in that mess and shitty mess. Yeah, can I say that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah, um, it's it, the trick is not getting stuck there, right? Absolutely. And you're going to need some time to wallow and feel sorry for yourself, but then yeah, you kind of have to dust Absolutely. It. Yeah, and it's okay to do that for a little while as well. It's just do you choose to stay there or do you choose to just, like, you know, be there for a bit and then go, right, come on, put your big girl's candy on and, you know, let's keep going. I want to just um, talk about what you do now and tell me that journey because it is – totally different to dance and, and owning a retail business and so on. So it's a whole new world. So do you want to run me through that journey and kind of what made you end up in this space and what's got you so fired up? Because you're super, you're doing great and, you know, you're really successful. You know what you're doing. You're super passionate about it. So there's obviously something there that's really clicked into place for you. Yeah. So, at, so, we, so it's back in 2010 is where everything kind of fell apart. So at that time, as well as dancing, I was a personal trainer and very um, taking on lots of holistic lifestyle coaching, um, training and started to pick up life coaching because I realised that it wasn't the people were coming to the gym, but it wasn't really the fitness that, you know, there was something else. And, and I really delved into what was making them tick. Why were they making those choices and, and really went down that personal development journey. 
uh, opened up a health and wellness centre and at the exact same time decided I need some help. I want to make this a lot bigger, you know, leverage the online platforms, so forth. So joined a business education community. And within being a month of being in that, I realised I actually wasn't that passionate about health and fitness that I thought I was. What I was really passionate about was the business. So I was all excited while I was opening the health and wellness centre. And as soon as the doors opened, I was like, hmm. This isn't actually what I wanted. And that was the, the defining moment where I went. It's actually the business behind the business that I enjoy, not the business itself, if that makes sense. So um, at that time, because I was getting websites up, my personal training clients turned into business coaching clients. It was so bizarre. And over the course of three months, pretty much half of my personal training clients turned into, I was coaching them in business. So I just went with it. And ask you one more thing before I let you go. So I, I love your story and I'm so glad I waited till I was recording to ask it because, you know, it's just good to get it fresh. So what I'm hearing out of your story is really a story of reinventing yourself. And yes, you had that little, you know, wallowing period and so have I and, you know, that's perfect. We're human, normal, but that's what happened. <laughs> but it's, and I think a lot of people, when they hear success stories and stories of reinvention, they think that there isn't that downtime and there isn't that sort of retreat period. So I just want to, you know, quite clearly say that's normal and that's human and, you know, don't beat yourselves up people. But what I hear from your story is really this, don't be afraid to reinvent yourself and go, I thought I wanted this, but oh shit, I actually want that. And, and it's okay to actually go to my personal training clients and say, hey, I can now help. I've realized this is my zone of genius and I can help you there. Because a lot of people think that when they make a change, they have to start all over again from no. scratch. They don't understand that they no. can make so many gifts with them. So Absolutely. you want to just sum that up for me? Because you, you've obviously done that. Yeah, that, it was so perfect. And I think that um, the biggest thing around this is progress beats perfection. And I was just on the phone to my publicist only 10 minutes ago. We were talking about this because her journey is very similar to mine in that people think that you have to start off and get the website and do this and make it pretty and get a logo. And you know what? It's absolutely crap. What you need to do is get your services out there. I know people that are, you know, do six figure businesses and they still don't have a website because people, people don't care. And it's okay to change every, we're, we're entrepreneurs. We're able to move very quickly. It's not like, corporates you know that's like a big cruise ship it takes a long time to slow down the boat and turn it we're so lucky it's like we're in a speedboat we can zip wherever we want and it's okay to do it every single day this didn't work like put it out there don't get caught up in it's not perfect i'll get it up next week because you'll hate it in two years anyway so you may as well just get it out there now get the feedback from the market and that two years will happen a lot quicker that that's my take on it anyway Awesome. I love that. Progress beats perfection. I think that sums it up beautifully. So I'm going to thank you for your time. Thanks for being Definitely. part of the One in a Million project. And um, you definitely are one in a million. You're probably one in a gazillion, actually. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks a lot, Sam.